How's it going everybody? Marvel Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback. We are now looking at the Fantastic Four issue number two. This issue came out in January of 1962. And as we look at the cover, which was nicely drawn by Jack Kirby, we see that we are looking at the scrolls. And that's right, we're looking at the first appearance of the scrolls. Now the scrolls, they've made appearances in the Fantastic Four. For many many years but in this particular issue they made their first appearance and so I'm happy to review this issue so don't click away because we're going to be looking at, at a fantastic story no pun intended and as always this story is written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby so we see at the very beginning we had the thing he looks like he's swimming in a um, an ocean or a sea and he punches this giant mighty support post and like why would he do this why would the thing cause this much damage in the sea and we also see um some very um strange things with sue storms she sees that's the invisible girl as we know from last issue remember she can turn invisible she takes a diamond and disappears as sue storms just committed a theft and also we see a great statue of like a military statue. They say it took five years to carve out of a solid marble. And then we see the Human Torch go right through it. I mean, just melts that giant statue. Why in the world would the Human Torch do such a thing? And we also see Mr. Fantastic stretching his arm out and shutting off the power to the city. And there's a giant blackout in the city. Why in the world? Would all four members of the Fantastic Four do such a thing? Have the Fantastic Four reverted to crime? Well, that's not the case, folks. That's not the case at all because we learned right off at the bat that all four of these guys are imposters. They're not the original Fantastic Four. No, sorry, they are the scrolls. We see right here they have a uh, mothership right above the Earth that's been hidden. It cannot be detected by Earth's atmosphere. And they're basically alien creatures that want to invade Earth. That's their goal. But their first and original plan, as we learned from this issue, is to defeat the Fantastic Four. Because the Fantastic Four, they feel, is a big threat. So we see that the original cast, the original members who are actually Fantastic Four, they're at a hunting lodge. Um, many miles away from where this occurred in New York City and they learn that they have been um, set up that there are imposters going around in the city and committing these awful awful crimes and we see from last issue if you don't remember Ben Grimm he's the thing he cannot stand his state where he's in right now the the state of being where he's in he hates being the thing, the, the rocky monster creature that he is. So right now he's just in a terrible, terrible mood. He just wants to crush everything that's in his way. He just feels terrible. So the thing um, has a very bad temper tantrum. And Mr. Fantastic, Sue Richards, and Johnny Storms, they, uh, they all have to calm thing down because he's still in a state of just anger and even Mr. Fantastic he blames the appearance of the thing based on what happened last issue it was Mr. Fantastic that wanted to go on a flight to Mars and because of that all four members of the Fantastic Four gained their superpowers due to the cosmic blast that were in outer space it's all he, Mr. Fantastic blames um, things anger based on what happened last issue so now we go to part two and as they're talking about what they need to do to get to find out what's going on we see that there's an invasion right here at the hunting lodge with a bunch of uh, American soldiers and they tell the Fantastic Four that they need to get out that they need to surrender and as the Fantastic Four they are um, law about abiding citizens they're going to do such that even the thing he surrenders as well and they are taken to private cells on a federal prison so all four 
members of the Fantastic Four. We see Sue Storms. We see um, Reed Richards. We see Johnny Storms and the Thing. They're all placed into their own specific cells that are supposed to be escape proof, but we learn real quick that nothing can defeat the Fantastic Four. All four members of the Fantastic Four break out of their prison and they escape. Um, they try the the army tries to shoot at the helicopter, but they get away. And so everybody seems to be against the Fantastic Four right now because they believe that the Fantastic Four are menaces to society. And Reed Richards being the scientific mind that he is, he's the leader of the group. He wants to figure out how can we really catch our imposters. So Johnny Storms comes up with an idea by saying, well, look in the, the Daily Globe newspaper. We see that there's going to be a new rocket going to be tested. How about I go to that site where it's going to be tested and see if the imposters will show up? The thing says, nah, -uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle you because that's a man's job. But Johnny Storms, being the youth that he is, he, he might be about 16, 17 years old. He says, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so Reed Richards has to break up the fight. So we see a little bit of animosity between the Thing and Johnny Storms. They, from the very start, they, they love each other, as you see throughout the years. But there have been some moments where they can't stand each other. So Johnny Storms um, does what he said he's going to do. He's going to go to the testing site. And Johnny Storms just about wrecks the whole the whole thing. Like, he... he he comes and he melts the platform where the launching site is. The the the, uh, the army tries to attack Johnny Storms in the air, but to no avail. And then Johnny Storms sees a getaway car. He says, okay, that must be the Fantastic Four. But he realizes real quick that this is not Reed Richards, and this is not Sue Storms. No, these are imposters. So Johnny Storms goes to the imposter's base, we see that he has found out that there are really are scrolls. And so they're like, oh, you brought the real human torch, you big dummy. What did you do that for? And Johnny Storm takes out his flare gun. Um, he signals the Fantastic Four in the air so that the rest of the team can come um, to Johnny Storm's aid. And we see just that as the thing makes his entrance right here. And we see the rest of the crew come in as the Fantastic Four fights back. So there's a lot of great things about this issue. As you see, there are different parts to the story. In the early Silver Age, as you see, just that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, they put a lot of the early um, Silver Age stories in parts, maybe two, one or two parts, or sometimes even three. And so the super scroll or the the scrolls rather, they are pretty super based on what they can do. Um, they're captured, and the thing he wants to just pulverize them. But remember, the thing is super strong, and if he ever fought off these scrolls, he would probably kill them. So Reed Richard comes up with a plan, and he says, "Look, we'll go to their mother base since they've already told us where it's at." We'll go to the mother base. They'll think that we're in disguise. They'll think that we're scrolls. So that's the plan. They go to this secret water tower. The water tower, it looks like a normal thing, but it's actually a spacecraft. And so they go to the mother um, base where the scroll king is at. And he tells the scroll leader that the earth is just crazy. You do not want to go there. Um... Reed Richard gives the, the scroll leader pictures of monsters and giant insects. And what's really funny here is he says they're actually clips from Strange Tales and Journey into Mystery. And, you have, and if you have any idea what he's referring to, he's referring to uh, Strange Tales and Journey into Mystery, the actual comic books that were being printed at that time. So that's pretty, pretty funny right there. So as the scroll leader is looking at these pictures, he says, there's no way that we can make conquest on Earth because of these giant creatures. They'll kill us. So 
He says, look, we got to get out of here. You need to come with us. Reed Richards says, no, we'll stay behind as it will, shall be a sacrifice ourselves so that you will be safe. The scroll leader gives Reed Richards a uh, medal. He thinks that, again, he thinks Reed Richards is a scroll. And the scrolls jet on out of there. They are gone. And so now the original members of the Fantastic Four through Trickery, they allowed um, a space invasion from not happening. And they return back to Earth. And we see that when they return back to Earth, the thing actually turns back to Ben Grimm. So is this finally um, Ben Grimm's calling? Is Ben Grimm finally back to normal? So the, remember, the police and army, they're still after the Fantastic Four because they think that they've caused some great harm to um, New York City. Ben Grimm realizes that he's the, he's human again, but as he says this, then he reverts back to the Rocky um, thing as we, we know and love. And he's like, oh man, it must have been a real funny joke. And so the thing is stuck being the thing for now, but Johnny Storms and Sue Storms tries to give the thing a little bit of hope, saying, look, maybe this is just showing that the cosmic rays are growing weaker. Maybe sooner or later you'll be Ben Grimm forever. You'll revert back to Ben Grimm. So then um, the police, they travel to where uh, the, the scrolls were left. Remember, the scrolls were detained by the Fantastic Four. And as they go to the scrolls, they see a giant snake. They see a rocky-looking spiky creature and all types of creatures. These are actually the scrolls. And they can actually turn to different alien type of creatures as well, not just human characters as well. And so they're captured. And so the police actually says, wow, there are actually aliens. There are actually scrolls. You weren't lying. And so the Fantastic Four are taken off the hook. And so that's pretty much how we end the story. Um, remember, Reed Richards still, he has to figure out, how am I, what am I going to do with the three scrolls? They're still on Earth. They're stranded because the mother base left. And so he hypnotizes all three scrolls and turns them into cows. And so that's how we end a very hilarious ending right here. All three um, scrolls are cows. And they're going to stay cows unless they are broken by the, the spell. Which won't happen anytime soon or I don't think it will happen. And so that's how we end Fantastic Four issue number two. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, review go ahead and like this video if you have not already um, like this video subscribe if you have not we I would enjoy having you um, because you're gonna see a lot more videos just like this um, in the next months to um, days to come and so um, go ahead and subscribe comment down below what you liked and I will see you next time